This is the first topic of Chapter 6, Classification of Elements. All matter is made up of small discrete particles. There are three types of particles, which make up matter. The first is, atom. The second type of particle is, molecule. Molecule is formed, when two, or more atoms combine chemically, to form a new particle. The third type of particle is, ion. Ion is the atom, or molecule with charge. Ion is formed, when an atom, or a molecule, accept electron from external environment, to become a negative charged ion. Or, release electron to external environment, to become a positive charged ion. This is the three types of particle, that make up of matter. For the type of particles, the chapter will emphasize only in, atom, molecule. An atom is the smallest particle of an element, and cannot be divided into anything smaller. An atom is very small, and can only be seen using an electron microscope. An atom is made up of three types of subatomic particles, which are, protons, neutrons, and, electrons. The nucleus in an atom, is located at the center of an atom. And, it consists of protons, and neutrons. Protons are positively charged, and neutrons are neutral in charge. This make the nucleus have positive charge. The electrons in an atom move around the nucleus, with a very high speed. And, they are the subatomic particle, with negative charge. In an atom, the number of electrons, that move around the nucleus, is equal to the number of protons, that located in the negative charge and positive charge cancels out each other. Make the atom electrically neutral. The proton is denoted by, symbol P. The electron is denoted by, symbol E. And, the neutron is denoted by, symbol N. The properties of subatomic particle, can be described by two important parameters. The first is, relative mass. The second is, relative charge. Now, let's see what is the relative mass of a subatomic particle. In fact, relative mass, is not the mass of the subatomic particle. Relative mass is the ratio of the mass of subatomic particle, relative to the mass of the neutron. It means that, the relative mass of a subatomic particle, is taking the mass of neutron, as a reference, to describe its own mass. Or, you can say that, relative mass of a subatomic particle, is its mass. When the mass of neutron, brought down to 1. To bring the mass of neutron to be 1. It is about to divide the mass of neutron by the mass of itself. The relative mass of a proton, is equal to its mass divided by the mass of the neutron. This is equal to 0 0.99862, it is approximated to 1. And usually, we say it is equal to 1. For electron, its relative mass is equal to its mass, divided by mass of the neutron. It is 0 0.000543, a small number, that can be negligible. From this, we can conclude that the mass of an atom is focusing on the nucleus. As the mass of electron, which orbits around the nucleus is too small. Here, you always need to remind yourself. The relative mass is coming without unit, this means that, it is dimensionless. However, the mass of the subatomic particles come along with unit in, gram. For the next, what is the relative charge of a subatomic particle? In first, the relative charge of the subatomic particle is not the charge of subatomic particle. The relative charge of the subatomic particle is the ratio of the charge of a subatomic particle, relative to the charge of a proton. It means that, relative charge of a subatomic particle is taking the charge of proton as reference, to describe its own charge. Another say is, it is the charge of the subatomic particle. When the charge of proton is brought down to plus one, this is done by dividing the charge of the proton, 
by the Jproton. For the rest of the other two, their relative charge is getting by, dividing their charge by the charge of proton 2. So, the relative charge of neutron is equal to zero, it means that, it is neutral in charge. And, the relative charge of electron, is equal to, minus 1. Relative charge is same as relative mass. They come along without unit, but with the positive, or negative sign, in front of the value. They come along without unit, but with the positive, or negative sign, in front of the value. Their absolute value of charge come with the unit in Coulomb with symbol C. Now, you have been introduced with the concept of, relative mass, and, relative charge. Here is a question, why we need relative charge, and mass for the subatomic particles. We need relative charge and mass of the subatomic particles is to keep the calculations that involve in chemistry section simple. And, in our syllabus, we are not going to cover the calculation of chemistry related topic. For the next, let's discuss the topic of molecule. A molecule is a neutral particle, which is formed when two or more atoms are joined together by strong forces, called a chemical bond. A molecule can be formed from the atoms of the same kind or atoms of different kinds all right this is all the content of topic atom and molecule now we learn about element and compound an element is a simplest form of substance that cannot be broke down into any simpler substance by any physical or chemical method this can be an atom or molecule of same kind of atoms. Some elements exist as a molecule, because, they are chemically unstable as single atom. Some elements exist as an atom, because, they are chemically stable as a single atom. Example of element that exists as an single atom is, gold. Gold, is made up of a gold atom. Example of element that exists as a molecule is, oxygen. Oxygen is an element that, made up of oxygen molecule, which consisting of two oxygen atoms. Oxygen atom is unstable, to exist in the universe. It chemically combine with another oxygen atom, to form a stable molecule. A compound is a substance made up of two, or more different elements, which chemically joined together, in a fixed ratio. The example of molecule A, B, it is chemically combined in ratio to two. A compound have properties, that are different from the elements, it is made up of. For example, carbon dioxide has different properties from carbon and oxygen. Compounds can be found naturally in our existing environment. And, can be produced in the laboratory. Example, water is existed naturally in our environment. It is the compounds, made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms, which are combined chemically. Water existed in liquid, which has different properties from oxygen and hydrogen. This is the explanation for the element and compound. Now, let's discuss the periodic table. As of now, scientists have discovered 118 elements. Not all the discovered elements occur naturally in our environment. And, some elements are synthesis in the laboratory. The elements with proton number from 95 to 118. Totally 24 elements, are the elements do not occur naturally on Earth. And, can only be created artificially in laboratory. They all are unstable in nature, and will decay to the element, that is stable in nature. Scientists have classified all the discovered elements, into a periodic table. In order to study the properties of the elements, in a systematic manner. The periodic table, is a list of elements. Arranged in the order of increasing proton numbers, or atomic number. Proton number, or atomic number, is the number of protons, inside the nucleus of an atom. Proton number is called atomic number because, the proton number determine 
the chemical properties of atom. And, this chemical properties, determine the type of the atom. The periodic table arranged the elements in 18 groups in column. And 7, periods in row. Elements in the same group, have similar chemical properties. The chemical properties, and physical properties of elements, gradually change. When, moving from left to right, across the same period in the periodic table. The elements in the periodic table are further classified as, metal, semi-metal, and non-metal. According to their chemical properties. Now, let's us talk about metal, non-metal, and inert gases in the periodic table. The elements in the periodic table are further grouped into three groups. The first group is metals, they are on the left periodic table. The second group is semi-metals, which is in the part between metals and non-metals. In the periodic table, the third is non-metals. They are located on the right side of the periodic table. Let's us first talk about the metals. About 80% of the elements in periodic table are metals. 91 elements, out of 118 elements. Metals are arranged on the left side of periodic table, except the hydrogen. Metallic properties of the elements on periodic table, decrease. When, moving across the period, from left to right. Metallic properties, is the set of chemical properties associated, with elements that are metals. This is all about the metals, in the topic. The second type of element is, non-metals. 20 out of 118 a periodic table, are non-metal. Non-metals are arranged on the right side of the periodic table. About the inert gases, and we also call them as noble gases. Inert gases are non-metal gases, that arranged in the group 18 on the periodic table. Inert gases are chemically non-reactive. Another say, they are chemically stable. It mean, inert gases do not react with any other elements, to form a compounds. Properties of inert gas are as follows. Inert gases are monoatomic elements. Monoatomic elements are, the elements that, consists of one atom. They are colorless gases, at room temperature. Inert gases, have low melting point, and low boiling point. They have low density. And, they are insoluble in water. This is the properties of the inert gases. I metals, it also called metal iodes. 6 out of 118 elements, on periodic table, are, semi-metals. Semi-metals are arranged on the board line, between metals and non-metals. Semi-metal have chemical properties, in between metal, and non-metals.